And we got pierced it. But you don't want to be that group, right? No, That's no. a new group, right? Now, we all have our lessons. Again, friends, we're studying, um, fill in the blanks. Um, and if you have any questions, just hold them until afterwards. And I'll do my best to answer as we go forward. Let us just pray one more time. Father in heaven, Lord, we thank you for Jesus that he's still interceding for us in the heaven sanctuary. As we now plan to open your inspired book, Lord, please grant us thy spirit, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Sign, seal, live. Now, what is our thematic text for this series? Our thematic text. Second Timothy. Second Timothy. And what does it say? Study to the what? Show thyself approved unto God. A word man that what? Be not be ashamed. What? Right, 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 the word of truth. Now friends, we've discussed that this word study comes from a Greek word. It means spoo da zoo. After three, one, two, three. Spoo da zoo. One more time. Spoo da zoo. This side only. Spoo da zoo. Holy Ghost kind of weak over there. This side. Spoo da zoo. All right. We all know some Greek now, right? And that word in the Greek, when Paul, it means you've got to be diligent, not a haphazard thing. It means you've got to be forward. You have an objective in life. Study, right? It means to labor. Charles Spurgeon says that inspiration sometimes comes through perspiration. Uh -huh. Right? Um, it means to exert oneself. It means to hasten. Why? Because the devil has got a great right because he knows it. He has a very short time. It also means to dig deep. And friends, we are told that surface reading is going to be lost. If all, if the furthest you go is the Sabbath school yeah. quarterly, you're in trouble. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not knocking the quarterly. This it is, it is needful for from harmonization. But we have to go deeper Amen. than the quarterly, yes. friends, right? We, and, and friends, we're going to dig deep. Now, we're totally in your handout. Um, and again, most of the stuff that our industry is in here, right? This is why it says in Revelation, all the books of the Bible do what? They meet and end. Here is a complement of the book of Daniel. One is prophecy and the other is what? Revelation. And so friends, in order for us to find out now who are those people who are resurrected, the righteous dead in resurrection, we must do this. Now, we're going to move right into our study guide. Again, for those who are for the first time, we're using a mode of study called catechize. We get the word catechism. It's really question and answer. So we ask the questions, you go to the Bible, and you fill the answers in. Amen. Number one now says now, what were the four angels commissioned to do with the four? We go to Revelation. Revelation chapter 7 now, right? John is on the Isles of Patmos. He's been exiled there by Emperor Diocletian um, for the word of God and for the testimony which he bore. And he's there now on, on the Sabbath, Shabbat of the Lord, right? And he now receives a series of visions by, by Gabriel and even by Christ himself. Revelation says, look what he sees now in vision. He says now, and I saw another angel ascending from the where? East. Now, friends, circle that word east in your Bible. Highlight east. Didn't say west or north or south. south. Emphasis must be placed on the east. Friends, when you study the Bible, every word matters. Amen. Even the comma and the full stop is saying something to you. <clears throat> Underscore east. Good things come out of the east. And wise man still comes from these. Are you with me, right? Now, having the what? The seal of the living God. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels who were, who were given to her the earth and the sea, saying, right? Heard not the earth, right? Uh, neither the sea, till we have what? Seal the servants of God where? In their foreheads now, right? So it's a loud voice. To whom it was given, so the four angels were commissioned to do what? They were commissioned to do what? To herd the earth. Mm. Right? But then they were told now, saying now, herd not the what? The earth. Neither the what? See. Nor the what? Sure. This is not palm trees like what you guys have out here. This is apocalyptic language. Sea symbolized people. Trees symbolize, symbolize rule ones in government. So don't hurt the people on the earth. Till who? We. we. Now, friends, look at the word. You have four angels that are holding by the winds. One comes from the east. And he says, till we. Now, who is the we in this context? It could not be the four angels. Because they were commissioned to do what? 
There are coming to the hurt the earth, and then he says, hold. So he could not be referring to um, say, uh, uh, say to whom it was given to hurt the earth. So these four angels were commissioned to hurt the earth, and then he says, hold on, hold, don't hurt the earth yet. Until we now, friends, who is the, the we? I believe, brothers and sisters, that this angel, the we is the reference to, in, in Revelation chapter 7, he is a part of the three angels of Revelation 14. Amen. That's the only part where we find other angels working in unison to save God's people. And I believe, I'm going to show you, that this angel in Revelation chapter 7 that has the seal of God is the third angel of the three angels. He has, and remember, what is the third angel warns us against? Worshiping the what? The beast and receiving the mark. So if you don't get the mark, turn the card over, you must get the seal. You see, friend, our friends, we're thinking this morning. Now watch it now. So what's the answer now? They were commissioned to lose the wings and then hold them. That's the answer. So they were commissioned to let go of the wings. All of a sudden, out of the east, the angel says, hold, hey, stop, stop, stop. I got some folks in, in Nevada <laughs> yeah. that need to get the seal of God. Follow me now. Now, Mrs. White said this to my I want you to please read this quotation now. It's in your handout, right? She said, I saw. I saw four angels who had work to do on the earth and were on their way to accomplish it. You, you saw that, right? So they were on their way to bring destruction. That was their focus. Look what happened now. Please read. Jesus was clothed with priestly garments. Uh-huh. He gazed in pity on the remnant. Uh-huh. Then raised his hands, and with a voice of deep pity cried, My blood, Father, my blood, my blood, my blood. Then look what happened now. Then I saw an angel with a commission from Jesus. That's imperative. Remember, he came from the east. The direction is important. Now, Jesus sent his angel now. Keep on reading, please, now. Swiftly flying to the four angels uh -huh. who had a work to do on the earth and waving something up and down in his hand and crying with a loud voice, hold, 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 hold until the servants of God are sealed in their foreheads. Uh -huh. They are keeping the armies of Satan at bay till the sealing of God's people shall be accomplished. Now, friends, once this is finished, you think you see, you've seen trouble? You haven't seen trouble yet. Now, we know that they're holding back the north wind. There are four winds, right? The north wind, the east wind, the south wind, and the west wind. We know that winds in Bible symbolize or connote commotion, strife, and war. And I'm telling you something. The calmest people in the entire world should be Adventists. We know this world cannot end in any nuclear bomb. Even COVID has to take a seat sometimes. Everything is in subjection to the work and the will of God. And we, we should not be paranoid or frantic. I'm not saying we should just act crazy now. But we shouldn't let the CDC set our table because we know, friends, there's no way under God's plan that any disease or, this, or war can end this world. Amen. These things are held in check. Even Kim Jong Yin and Putin Amen. and even Trump has to take a seat sometime. They can't, they don't, they can't go all crazy. They are held in check until the sealing of God's people are accomplished. Right. So the wings, the four wings, are held in check. Four because of now. Mr. White says now. John sees now the elements of nature, even so the, the wind survives earthquakes, tempests, even political strife represent being held by the four angels. There is friends. All these elements from one part of the earth are held because we have a work to do. Amen. And nothing will hinder our work, right? Amen. Look what she says now again in Great Controversy. And these are in your hand. Let's follow up. She says now. As the angel of God sees to held in check the fierce wave of human passion, all the elements of strife will be let loose. So even human passions, wickedness to a great degree is held in check by these angels. Are you with me, right? She says that the whole world will be involved in a ruin more terrible than that which has been. So once the scene is over, the winds, so, it, so the devil himself doesn't have free reign. He himself is held in check 
because God has a word to do, right? Now, we learn now that the angel came from the east. The east is important. Underscore because the direction from where the angel comes from tells what he's all about. Amen. Now, if I say to you, if two guys are in altercation, and one say, do you know where I'm from? Bro, I'm from Compton, man. Mm. What, what is that saying about this fellow? It's tough. If you say I'm from Sugar Hill, <laughs> what I mean, you got some money. So sometimes the direction where you comes from paints a picture of who you, not all the time, but sometimes. This angel comes from the east. Now, in the book of Ezekiel, drop this text down quickly now. Ezekiel 43, Ezekiel said that I beheld the glory of the God of Israel coming from where? The east. That is imperative. The wise man came from the east. Did you know that when Jesus comes, he's coming from the east? Yes, yes. yes in great controversy, Ellen White says this now. She says, soon there, there appears in the east a small black cloud about the size of a man's fist. She says now, the people of God know it to be the sign of the Son of Man. Jesus is coming from the east. Now, let's make it more practical now. Where is the East in North in, in America? If I say show me the East, where would you point in America? This East Coast. East Coast, right? No. This speaks volumes. Did you know that Adventism began in the East? Right. Literally in the East. Remember, the woman fled and America gave her refuge. Once she got strength, she re-emerged, not from Texas, nor from Florida. She emerged from the east. So if I'm going to join a church in prophecy, that church must have its etymology from where? The east. the east. Now, here is the east. This is northeast. Adventism began in, you're looking at Maine, New Hampshire. That's where the Sabbath truth came from. It came from the east and it's taking the whole entire west. That's imperative. I'm going to show you. Ellen White, all the people started right here. The East is imperative now. Now, now what is the seal of the living God? What is the seal of the God? What is it now? Now, by definition, a seal is used to validate or authenticate any enactment or laws that a person or power may promulgate. Frequent instances are used in scripture. Here is a text, Esther 8.8. 8. In the days of Esther, when they wanted to authenticate the seal, the Bible says now, writing also for the Jews, as I liken it in the king's name and seal it with the king's ring. For the writing which is written in the king's name and is sealed with the what? The so the king's seal brought about authenticity. Now friends, in the Bible, you're gonna find it, you may wanna jot these down quickly. A seal, a sign, a token, or a mark are used interchangeably. Wherever you see a seal, you can put a mark. Wherever you see a sign, you can put a mark. Wherever you see a token, you can put a seal. They are used interchangeably. Here are some texts. You can jot these down real quickly, right? Genesis 17:11. The Bible says now, and he have, and he shall circumcise the flesh of your foreskin. It shall be a what? Or I could say a what? Sign. Sign or a what? Seal. Or a what? All right, you can switch them around, right? Yeah. One more text, Romans 4.11. The Apostle Paul says now, ye have received the what? Sign of what? As a what? So I can say ye have received the token of circumcision, the seed of circumcision, or the mark. They can be used interchangeably, right? One more text, Ezekiel 9 verse 4. Ezekiel said now, and the Lord said to him, go through the midst of the city, through the midst of Jerusalem and set a what? Mark. Or a? Token. Or a? Sign. Or a? Seal. Same thing. Up on the floor. And Revelation chapter 7 now, John says, I saw an angel come on east having the what? Seal. Or a? Token. Or a? Sign. Or a? Mark. Mark. It can be used interchangeably. No, no. Whenever, when a ruler's seal is attached to a legal paper, the seal must contain three elements. Friends, you got to get this, friends. It must contain, fill in it now, the name of the one in authority. We must find his name, N-A-M-E, the name. We must find his title. 
and we must find the territory over which that one rules. Three things the seal must contain. Now, for this is Adventism 101. We haven't gotten to 102 yet. This is a basic fundamental Adventism. Now, whenever a president of the United States makes a promulgation, how does he begin? He begins to impart his authority to a proclamation by a combination of three things. He's saying, I am Donald J. Trump, president of these United States. Or somebody in the whole world. <laughs> you didn't get that word, right? So, a proclamation. Now, a seal. However, though, friends, today a seal is usually placed either in the beginning or at the close of a law decree. But in the divine law, follow me now, it is placed in the center. And nothing can be taken from it or added to it now. So if we're looking for a divine law, where would we go in the Bible to find the law of God? Exodus, Exodus 20, right? So we're going to look at it now. We're going to see which one of these commandments contain these three elements, right? The Ten Commandments now. I'm going to read the first, my elder, the first, please read one The first three. Now we're looking for the name, title, and what else? Territory. We're going to read the first three commandments. Now I want you to think if you see these three things in these first three. Ella, please read now. And it's on the screen. And God speaks the words saying. And God spake all these words saying, I am the Lord thy God, which hath brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. All right. Go ahead. Thou shalt not make. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them nor serve them for I the Lord thy God and a jealous God uh -huh. visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. All right, and showing mercy. And showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. All right, we covered the first three. Did you guys see those three elements? No. I just saw one. But I, I didn't see the title or the restriction. That's the first three. Now, let's now transition now to the last six. And I'm going to read now. My elder is going to read now. Right, I'm going to skip out one. Um, the fourth, going down to the fifth now. Please read now. Honor thy father and thy mother that that thy days may be long upon the earth, the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Now, this is the only commandment, believe it or not, that produces, that gives longevity. Right. When I was growing up, I'm not lying, only old folks died. In my, we lived, young people, we just lived. And one of the reasons why, because we were very respectful to our parents. Mm -hmm. One of the reasons why you're seeing more, ch more parents burying their children is because of a disrespect to parent authority. If you want to go to an early grave, just diss your mama. Long enough and hard enough. And one of these days, ashes to ashes, dust to dust, be the last word over your epitaph. It's the only commandment that produces longevity. Honor your father and your mother. Thou shalt not kill. Don't commit adultery, thou shalt not steal. Right? right? Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor, nor covet thy neighbor's house, thy neighbor's wife, manservant, maidservant, chainsaw, weed whacker. You didn't get that one. <laughs> now, friends, we've looked at nine. We haven't seen anything that bears the name, the title, or the territory. Only one. I'm going back to the fourth now. Here it is now. Remember, and the very fact he says remember, that means you have an inclination to forget. If I say remember to cut the stove off, mm. right. it meant that you may burn the house down and say, so God knew. Now bear in mind, when he wrote this, right, the commandments were never given yet. This is the first time they were given audit at Sinai to ancient Israel, remember, right now. The Sabbath to keep it holy. Six days shall thy labor do all thy work. 
But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. Amen. That's his name. His name, right? In it thou shalt do any work. Thou nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, thy maidservant, thy chattel, nor thy stranger, nor thy chainsaw, nor your weed whacker, nor your screwdriver. It's in the text, you know. Everything in your house must rest. Yes, my neighbor cannot be using my lawnmower Amen. to cut his lawn Amen. and I'm going to church keeping the Sabbath. Is you crazy? <laughs> He can get it, son. Son of in sunsets. Everything in my house must rest. And you see, my family, they don't come to my house because they know if you come, you better have a suit. Because he's going to church. Amen. If you can, if you don't plan to come to church, there's a hotel or a motel or a holiday inn. <laughs> Everything in your house must rest. Amen. Even the strangers must keep. That's why they don't come. Amen. It's fine, but we're a free moral agent. You cannot have visitors come to your house on Thanksgiving and you're in this house worshiping the house of God and then home turn on TV watching Sports Center. Come on. You know, that's a that's a fun way of keeping the Sabbath. Everything in your house must rest. Full stop. No negotiables. Then he says now, for in six days the Lord made title. Title, creator. You see, creator. Heaven and earth is jurisdiction. So, friends, here we see that the Sabbath is the sign that God is our creator. Ezekiel 20, 20 says, Moreover, hollow my Sabbath, it shall be a sign, or a seal, or a mark, or a token. It didn't say Sunday. So, therefore, what is the seal of God? It must be filled in now, God's seventh day Sabbath. Amen. Now there's some who are teaching, unfortunately, yeah. that the Holy Spirit is the seal of God. Yeah. That is that is heresy. Amen. Amen. The Holy Spirit is not the seal. He is, I believe again, believe that He is divine. Amen. I believe He's divine, He's divinity. He's, he's the one who impresses the seal on your forehead. But he's not the seed. The Sabbath is the seed of God. Right now, we realize, right, that a power would arise that would think to change times and laws. We know this. The little boy in Daniel chapter 7 is the Catholic Church system. As a matter of fact, now, from their own publication, we find this. You may read the Bible from Genesis to Revelation, and you will not find a single line of arise in the sanctification of what? Sunday. He says the scriptures enforce religious observance of such a day. The reason we observe the first day instead of the seventh is based on no positive command. The article goes on to say now, right? Uh, one will search the scriptures in vain for the authority changing from the seventh to the first. The Catholic Church for over a thousand years before the existence of a protestant by the virtue of her, her divine mission changed the day from Sabbath to Sunday. They're, really, they're telling you, they're not hidden. Even the Catholic Encyclopedia. Cardinal Gibbons, um, and as a matter of fact, when I used to play soccer, I played against, there are many Cardinal Gibbons school in Florida. And we, we, we played against these, that, that school for many, 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 many seasons, right? He was, up until his death, he was the highest Catholic voice in America. He was almost the Pope incarnated in America. And he said this now, the Catholic Church by its own infallible authority, created Sunday as a holy to take the place of the Bible Sabbath. Now think now, friends. In Revelation chapter 7, if the angel is saying to the other angels, hold, hold the winds until we have sealed, it must be that there was a point in history where the Sabbath was lost. And he was bringing it back. Amen. And we know it was lost in the dark ages. Friends, if I have my glasses, I'm not looking for them. That's the sign of cyanosis. You're going crazy, man. <laughs> right? So the very fact now he's saying, hold, hold, I got something. It tells me a point in history was when the Sabbath was lost. So up until this point in history, the Sabbath was lost. 
And Jesus could not come until he had a people keeping all of his commandments. And so therefore, the thing he had in his hand had to be the Sabbath truth. Amen. It came out of the East. East, New Hampshire, Maine. Now, so now, all right, now. Now, where is the seal of God placed? Revelation 3, 7 says now. It is placed in their what? Now, friends, this, this now leads us to a study which, the answer is for it, which many of us don't take any interest in. You can never be sealed. And where I'm from, never, never happens too often. We will never be sealed while we dis disallow the laws of physiology. We have to know our own bodies. Now, we don't have to go become medical doctor. I'm not, I'm not saying that, but we must understand how this wonderful system works. You cannot be a novice about your body and be sealed. Amen. Mm -hmm. You have to understand the basic about the body. Physiology, how the organs work, their codependence. Now, there's a book, you know, friends, I, I love to read, man. And I'm telling you something, friends. We have come to a point where we have a readerless church. Amen. And those who are reading are reading Rick Warren. They're reading the wrong things. Friends, you've got, and if you're waiting for somebody to feed you in this church, you will die of starvation. You're going to have to make your redemption. You must read. Now, YouTube has its place. But it's only as good as if you have some data. You need to get back to the books, and I, I, I beseech you, friends, you need to get the books now. There's a book I'm suggesting. I'm always suggesting books. It's a good book. It's called Understanding the Body's Organs and the Eight Laws of Health. Very simple book. Elementary. Even your children can understand. It's on physiology. The author breaks down the organs and their dependence and how salvation is tied to them. It's a good book to get. Very good book. Matter of fact, I had my church, for one Bible class, we went through the whole entire book. Broke it down. And I learned, I learned a lot from this little book. Now, this is why I said this about physiology. And my other please read now. She says now, to become acquainted. To become acquainted with the wonderful human organism. Uh -huh. The bones, muscles, stomach, liver, bowels, heart, and pores of the skin. And to understand the dependence of one organ upon another for the helpful action of all is a study in which most take no interest. Uh -huh. In order to be fitted for translation, the people of God must know themselves. So you must know yourself. They know if and or buts about it. You must understand the, the, the pores of the skin. The sweat glands, how does it work? Why don't we subscribe and wear makeup? I'm gonna tell you a true story. I have a cousin, he's a Rastafarian. Bubba Dread. And one day he came from Jamaica and he brought up some oil. Natural oil. I'm a naturalist. I believe in natural stuff. So I'm going to prayer meeting that Wednesday night. And the lotion in the house was, was finished. So I didn't want to use no olive oil. It's too shiny. So he had some nice oil. So I put the oil right on my skin, my face, and took my body like a good old Adventist and my hand up with the prayer meeting. I'm sitting in church, and all of a sudden, a vibe came over me. I said, where did vibration come from? It's the vibe I used to get when I used to smoke marijuana. My eyes are getting mellow. I just feel relaxed in the spirit, but it wasn't the spirit. <laughs> Friends, when I went, I said, man, tell me, I didn't feel right in church. And I started investigating. What he brought up was some hemp oil. All right, I put it on my skin. The skin is the largest organ. The skin absorbed things. That stuff went in my blood. It was just as if I had an inhale. And friends, ladies and gentlemen, when you put on makeup, that stuff goes in the skin and can damage your being. Exercise, get some cocoa butter, some shea butter. And you'll be all right, my sister. You know what I'm saying? You'll be all right. So, when you talk about the pores of the skin, which is the largest organ of the body, now you see why, why we counsel people not to put these things on. 
because it damages, it does affect the body. It's a skin. Physiology is in the book. Right? She goes on to say now, the brain nerves which communicate to the entire system are the only mediums by which heaven can communi communicate to man and affect his most inner life. Whatever disturbs the circulation of the electric current in the nervous system lessens and strengthens the vital powers and there is a deadening of the mind. People say, you know, I can't see it. And I believe they really can't see it. They just can't see what's wrong with doing nothing with that. In his book, a good book to get, Neil Nedley, Proof Positive, a very good book, they did a case study on the forehead. He said now, the brain is, has several functions or lobes. Each lobe has a specific function. It's in your handout, right? Behind the forehead are frontal lobes. For convenience, we refer to both the right and left lobe as the frontal lobe. He says, it is the largest lobe of the brain. It is the seat of what? What else? What else? And what else? The will. So when God has a reason, he's appealing to where? Not the hypothalamus. He's appealing, and the devil knows the great controversy is over your frontal lobe. Not over your money. The devil don't spend money. It's over right here where the seal of God is placed. So watch this now. And the devil knows this. In that book, Dr. Neil Levy says now, he gives different size of brains. He says the cat, uh, uh, the, the, uh, three, uh, three point five percent, the dog, chimpanzee, and the human being, 30%. Then he says that there's a case study done in that book. There are certain things that have been proven scientifically, scientifically, dated, documented, that damages and affects the frontal lobe and towards reasoning. He, he lists them. He says, number one, hypnotism. And he lists certain therapies. Yoga, which means union to yoke. To yoke with who? Brahma. My mother, I went by her house one time, boy. And she, she's into yoga. And one day she wasn't there, I threw those books out. And boy, she got upset. So I started to educate. She said, she said to me, but son, I don't believe in yoga. I just do the stretches. I say, mom, the stretches are yoga. <laughs> Each stretch is a sun salutation. There are 12 stretches for the 12 signs of the zodiac. It is, it, it is by design. So you can't say, man, I'm only going to stretch and I don't do yoga. No, the stretching is yoga, duh. Right? Television damages the frontal lobe. Scientific, it's been proven, brothers and sisters. And what it does, you see all these sitcoms? The average sitcom is about 20 minutes, you know. The commercial adds up. And what happens now, each time they break, your attention span breaks. So you find the average person in church, they can't sit for an hour. They say, boy, he preached too long. Because after a while, they just tune you out. It's because your attention span is too short. Each time you hook, they break. And so your brain is conditioned. 20 minutes and it lights out. He says now that certain music attends for the load. They did a study in that book where they got three mice. They put one in classical, one in rock, and one in hymns. And the mice knew the maze back and forth. They put them in the classical hymn and rock for half an hour. It's in the book. And when they put them back in the maze, in, 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 in the rock, they were just spinning around. They didn't know, they, they, were, they turned on each other. Only the ones that were in the classical and the hymns could find the way out through. I said, if that can happen to a, a mice or a rat, what about doom, doom and those hypnotic beats? In the book, they enlist certain rock, reggae, reggae, and certain hypnotic beats. It damages the frontal lobe. And that's why we discourage this inane mantra in our churches. What's a mantra? We fall down and we get up, 
we fall down and we get up. He reigns forever, forevermore. He reigns, 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 that's all they're singing, and it's touching outside. That's a mantra. Mantras are used to induce hypnotism. And most of the songs we sing, it's a mantra. Well, not we, some of them. It's one hook over and over, tenor, bass, alter, tenor, bass. That's all they sing over and over and over with the heavy beats. It affects the frontal loop, and the devil knows. That's why he cranks out the music in the end of time. Mm -hmm. They go on to say that he lists now certain drugs. Now, I'm no medical doctor, and I would never tell any person to disregard anything. You're not going to sue me. Consult your physician. <laughs> Real quick, right? But they list certain illicit drugs, prescription drugs, so caffeine, nicotine, it does damage the frontal lobe. This is where the seal of God is placed. Yeah. And then certain dietary so it's in the book, you know. He lists Cheese. Now I know that the 11th commandment of this church, thou must have macaroni and cheese every Sunday. <laughs> and I'm wrong with that, but the cheese is not good for you. Cheese has a chemical in it called trimine. From a medical perspective, it does affect the frontal lobe. You can make some cashew cheese, some almond cheese, and some rice cheese. And have your mac. But the regular stuff is not good for you. And we were told, that's why Ellen White says, it is unfit for consumption. It should not be even put, put in the body. Then now, sugar. All these things affect, the, that Skittles will kill you dead. That will refine. And the devil knows this. And that is why, brothers and sisters, you see, his assaults against humanity is over the frontal lobe. It is a seed of reasoning, intellect. This is where the seed of God is placed. And I told you before, no fool can be a Seventh-day Adventist. This is a thinking man's religion. Amen. Amen. We call for you to think before you shout. Some people go to church, sermon was good. What was it about? I don't know. Boy, it was good. It was good to the emotion, but not to the intellect. And I've learned one of the hardest work to give some people is to have them think. When I was in school, they would say, show work. Oh, man! <laughs> How did you get to the answer? You got to show that work and that two and that four. And they wanted to see how you arrived at this answer. Amen. You've got to think in this church. Amen. They can shout, but we think before we shout. Amen? Amen. Now, so we know what the seal is. Follow me now, it's a Sabbath. Now what is the sealing? Now let me say this. The seal is not the sealing. Amen. Not everybody who has this, who profess to have the seal will receive the sealing. Amen. But everybody who receives the final sealing would have had the seal. Amen. Make sense? Now the seal is the Sabbath. But Paul says in Israel in his day, he says, not all Israel are of Israel. This is why he says, please, he says, not, not, not all who profess, please read not all who profess. Not all who profess to keep the Sabbath will be sealed. There it is. Keep on reading. She says, now, there are many. There are many even among those who teach the truth to others who will not receive the seal of God in their foreheads. Uh -huh. They had the light of truth. Uh -huh. They knew their master's will. Uh -huh. They understood every point of our faith, but they had not corresponding work. There it is. Their lifestyle did not reflect. And nothing is more repulsive than a lying Seventh-day Adventist. Ooh, ouch. Nothing is more repulsive than a dirty Seventh-day Adventist. It is repulsive. And oftentimes you hear it, I will never go into business without having this again. I hear it all the time. And what happens now is called a sudden liability. We're one with that Venice. They say all of them are crooks. All them folks at Central them are liar. Only one person lied, you know, but the whole church gets blamed for one person's action. She says, those, okay, you can read that one right now. All right now. 
Then she says, what is this? She says, now, it is not a seed or a mark, but a what? Settling into truth. Both what? So you got to know it. But also what? In other words, you must live what you profess. And this is where we fall at the lateral. We know it. We know the seventh is the Sabbath. But how we keep it, boy, tell you a true story. I was preaching in California. And um, when I in California, let me go to, I was in Florida, out west. I was called to preach at a church. And them folks were strange. By 1230, if you're not finished, the lights go off. Literally, I had to cut my sermon short. And so I'm getting ready to leave. And the head elder says now, he says, not, nah, um, we're going for lunch. So I'm thinking, I'm going to his house for lunch. He says to his wife, honey, you got the credit card? The church's card. So I'm saying, church card, lunch? So I started to click in my mind. Them folks were going to Ruby Tuesdays. I said, elder, today I'm fasting. Going to restaurants on the Sabbath. That's not what the Bible teaches. So you see, we know that the same, but how do we keep the Sabbath? That's where we set, that's where we differ. Right? So therefore now, friends, fill it in now. What's the ceiling? Fill it in now. It is a settling the truth, both intellectually, fill it in now, and spiritually. You got to know it, but you also got to live it. You got to live it and believe with all your heart and soul and mind. Let they see your good works, Jesus says. Yes. Amen. And I've come to a point now, even if you are a contractor and you do a job and the job is done well and the people complain, I'd rather go back and make the adjustment, even if it costs me that, but then to say, that was a crooked contractor and he goes to the Sabbath. Mm. I would not want my religion yes. to be castigated. I'd rather take a loss or take one for the team for lack of word. Let it not be said that the lifestyle, mm -mm. and too often time, friends, we hear it within our, there are many who should have been in this church because of somebody, lifestyle, it turned them off. And it ought not be, right? Now, we're told now that the ceiling is the last work that Christ performs before he leaves the most holy place. Right now, now, this is where we're going to take flight now. When did the sealing work begin? We need a date. As Adventists, we know dates. If I say to you, 1844, what happened? Talk to me. Wait, what? All right. If I say 1755. All right. If I say 1833. If I say May 1780. May of 1780. All right, 1780, what happened? Dark day, Dark day right? If I say 1798. That's the, uh, when the, the, the Pope. All right, if I say 31 AD. Jesus. If I say 34 AD. Jesus. If I say 27 AD. Christ is If I say BC 3. Birth of Jesus. So we know dates. We can put a date now. There is a biblical date to when the sealing began. And this now lets us know who are the people who will be resurrected, righteous, dead in the resurrection. Now watch it now. There are the 2520. This new teaching. They teach, which I don't, I don't agree with them, that the sealing of Revelation 7 began on 9-11. I don't know how they got that. 9-11, the towers came down. Full stop. Unfortunately, and many lost their lives. Is that scriptural? No. Stephen Haskell is one of our pioneers. Now, Stephen Haskell now was one of those who helped perform Adventism after 1844. There are three books which he wrote. They are excellent books. Very good, cogent, organic books. Not GMO books. Good books. Very good books. I mean, you should, if you don't have these books, next week, shame on you. 
Now today you today you're excused. But you need to, and your friends, you got to read. This one is a powerful book on the sanctuary. Amen. It is wonderful. You gotta get them. Get them on Amazon. Right? Buy all three. Good books right now. This one is called The Story of the Seer of Papas. S-E-E-R. That's your on Revelation. And this is on Daniel in the sanctuary. Now, in this book, he is commenting on Revelation chapter 7. Now bear in mind, Stephen Haskell was, was around in that time frame. Stephen Haskell said now, he said in 1848, this is four years after 1844, he said the angel from the east called to the four angels to hold the wings of war until the servants of God were what? Now how did Haskell arrive in 1848? Now, in 1849, one year later, Ellen White wrote in the article President Truth, which her husband started the publication, right? She wrote that the sealing work was what? So Haskell said it. Ellen White, there must be something to it now. What happened in 1848 is what we call in Adventism the Sabbath Conference. These are in your handout. The Sabbath Conference is now. They happened in April of 1848. This is four years after 1844. Now, it says now, I'm reading now, a series of meetings, this is in our historical documentation, a series of meetings of friends of the what? Held in various what? In what? That's north, east. The angel came from the east. So look for the Sabbath truth to come out of there. East. East. All right, now. During the formatory period when James White, Ellen White, Joseph Bates, and others began the work of uniting the brethren on the great truths connected with the what? Third, Third, Third angel's message. Third angel, 1848, the Sabbath. And that's why I said the angel of Revelation chapter 7 is the same as the third angel of the three angels. The same angel. Now, the article says there were six of these conferences in 1848. During some of the, these conferences, apparently leading men, James White, Joseph Bates, Stephen Price, Ahem Edson, and others unnamed took the advantage of their opportunity to study the Bible. Together, to do what? To settle the questions on various points of doctrine, speaking in the manner in which the foundation of our faith had been laid, she said. Ellen White wrote, I met with them and we studied and prayed earnestly. Often we remained together until late at night. Sometimes through the entire night. They never had Google or Siri. They couldn't ask anybody. There was nobody to ask. They were the ones carving this thing out. Amen. Praying for light and studying. That's how they got the message. That's how they were settled. So we believe that the sealing of God's people, them being settled into truth, intellectually and spiritually, began sometime around, filled in 1848 at the Sabbath conferences. 1848 is a critical date in our church. Now, again I said, I believe with all my heart, that the angel in Revelation chapter 7, who has the seal of God in his hand, is the same as the third angel of the three angels. Now, let me give you a history as to how the Sabbath truth came to Adventists. Rachel Preston Oates lived in Maine, New Hampshire, North East. She moved to help her daughter, who was a school teacher. When she got to Maine, or New Hampshire rather, there was no Sabbath keeping church. So she went to a church of a, a Methodist church, a man named Frederick Wheeler. When she got to Wheeler's church, that Sunday they were doing communion. And Wheeler said that you should not partake of the communion unless you're keeping all of God's commandment. And she said, hold on, there with your spirit. You should because you're not keeping all of God's commandment. So after church, she said, Pastor Wheeler, I, 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 I want to talk to you. 
So Pastor Wheeler, what he did, right, he, um, there's a slide I want to see it. Pastor Wheeler, he visited her house on horseback. Rachel Oaks came out. Now he's a, he's a Sunday keeper, sincere man. Never heard about the Sabbath. He came in his house now and she brought him in and she said, Pastor Wheeler, she gave him some cookies and you know what after tea. She said, you said yesterday that we should not take the communion unless you're keeping all of God's commandments. Well, you better put it back. She said, what do you mean? Because you're not keeping the seven-day Sabbath. He's a seven-day Sabbath. Never heard of that one. She took her Bible and she gave the man of God a study on the Sabbath. Amen. When he left the house, he left convicted and converted. Henceforth, I'm going to stop keeping Sunday and start keeping the Sabbath. Bear in mind, they were not Seventh-day Adventists. Amen. They were just Sabbath keepers. Now, what happened now? Wheeler had a friend. His name was Farnsworth. Eugene Farnsworth. So we in a turn told Farnsworth, Farnsworth now began to keep the Sabbath again. They were not Seventh-day Adventists. They were Sabbath keepers. Farnsworth had a friend by the name of T.M. Preble. T.M. Preble got the Sabbath truth from Farnsworth, from Wheeler, right? It was T.M. Preble's track who converted the Andrews family of whom John Andrews, we know of whom Andrews is named after university. T.M. Preble now had a friend named Joseph Bates. Joseph Bates read Preble's track about the Sabbath he got from Farnsworth and Wheeler and Richard Oaks. And he said, you know, this is so good. He walked all the way back to Farnsworth to affirm or confirm what Preble told him. After he confirmed it now, Bates was an author, a sea captain. He could write. He wrote a track now called in 1846, two years after 1844 now, called The Opening of Heaven. And then later on, in that, in, 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 uh, in, in, he wrote in August, a track called The Seventh Day Sabbath, A Perpetual Sign. So he's now, I think he was the advocate of the Sabbath truth now. He, Bates had a friend named J.B. Cook. J.B. Cook now got Bates' track, read it, and he gave it to all O.R.L. Crozier. It was Crozier who was walking through the cornfield with Harold Edson. Crozier now had a printing press called the Day Dawn. He printed now Bates, what Cook gave him, that Bates got from Pebble, from Farnsworth, from Wheeler, from Rachel Oaks, from the Holy Ghost. Amen. All of a sudden now, Ellen White and James White got married that year and they got the track. They read the track. And they said, I need to talk to my father Bates. They wrote Bates a letter. Bates now, Bates now came to their home and studied with them. And they now decided we're going to start keeping the Sabbath. Mm -hmm. After 1846 now, they decided now we're now Sabbath keepers. The next year she got her first vision. And she saw the Ten Commandments. Yes, she did. Four and six. The first four shone brighter than the latter six, and the fourth had a halo around it, brothers and sisters. God could not have given her a vision until she decided to keep the Sabbath. Because remember, where there's no law, there's no prophets to the law and the prophets. The prophets, a true prophet, must keep all of God's commandments. That is why in the dark ages there was no prophets because there was no law. So the Sabbath truth now, in 1847, they got the Sabbath, and that's now, in 1848 now, they began to study, and that is why we believe 1848 was when the angel says, hold, hold, hurt not, hurt not. We got the Sabbath truth. A movement that came out of the East. And again, I believe that the angel of Revelation chapter seven is the same as the third angel of the three angels. They are the same. Now, so here is now, friends, the Sabbath truth teaching in 1848. That's a critical date you need to know as we go forward. Now, 
Is there a location for the sealing of God's people in the last days? In Ezekiel chapter 9, Ezekiel, and why says this about Ezekiel 9? He says, the sealing of God's servant is the same that was shown in Ezekiel. So in other words, Ezekiel chapter 9, verse 7, there are parallels. There are things we can learn from them. Now, is there a location for the sealing? Go back to Ezekiel. Again, I said now, Revelation 7 and Ezekiel are the same thing. In Ezekiel chapter 9, there was a location for the sealing. Now, in the Bible, you can jot these down. Jerusalem can symbolize many things. Several things. But Jerusalem was called a city of, city of peace. It was also called a city of truth. Jesus told his disciples to tarry in where? Jerusalem. Don't leave until the early rain fell. In Acts chapter 1 verse 4, he told them, I command them, do not depart from where? Jerusalem. Now, in Jerusalem at that time, it was a bad place to be in. The city. They were committing sins, transgressions, abominations, and wickedness, but God told them to do what? Do not depart. Stay in that place, even though sins are committed, abominations are, do not leave Jerusalem until you get the Holy Ghost. Now, friends, when Jesus started his ministry, 27 AD, he started a lay, self-supporting ministry, not an offshoot church. Every Sabbath, Jesus was in a Jerusalem church. Amen. That was his custom. Now, he didn't spend all day in church. That's not true Sabbath keeping. He came, studied the Sabbath school quarterly. He made comments. And then he went out in Jerusalem and did ministry. But every Sabbath, from he was from, from we know Christ, he was all evil when they kicked him out of the synagogue. He went and found another church. And he went back in. Now, even when Jesus had his ministry, he did show respect for the organization in Jerusalem. When he healed the man, he said, Matthew 8, go show thyself to the who? Priest. To the priest and offer a gift and give it to Caiaphas, the man who was trying to kill me. So Jesus did respect the organization at that time. He was a part of it, but he had a ministry. Judas kept the bag. Nothing is wrong with having a self-supported ministry, provided your ministry work to enhance the church, not to tear down the church or to expose the church. Big difference, friends. Now, there were many separates in Jerusalem at that time. Julius Gallimore was one of those radicals in Jerusalem. And the Bible says, in Acts chapter 5, Gamaliel, the doctor of the law, said to the apostles, leave them. He said, remember, remember, remember that man, that man, uh, 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 Phineas, boasting himself, to whom a number of 4,000 joined themselves in his movement, and they came to naught. He says, remember, um, remember after this man came, Judas of Galilee. Saying, don't pay tax, don't pay your tithe, God have mercy. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and people followed him. And they perished and were despised. So there were people in Jerusalem who were teaching, separate yourself from the organization. Christ never taught that. Amen. He worked with them as far as it is good walking distance. Amen. Amen. Now watch it now, friends. We are told now. The sealing of God's servant is the same that took place in Ezekiel's day. Now, Ezekiel chapter 9, 8, Ezekiel saw some terrible things happening. In, the, in Donald Trump's word, really, 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 really bad things. There were really, 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 really bad things happening. They were worshiping the sun. They were celebrating Easter. They were gone, they gone crazy. And Ezekiel says, oh my Lord, you're doing that? And God said now to the angel with the seal, and the Lord said unto him, go through the what? 
midst of Jerusalem in the what? Midst of the city and set a what? Or a seal or a sign or a token where upon the where? Of the people who were participating in the sins. Who were signed and what else? In other words, they saw what was happening in Jerusalem, but they did not participate. They used their pen and their voice respectively to try to correct the bad behavior, but they did not participate. That's a big difference, brothers and sisters. Now, what am I, what am I saying? Friends, today, Jerusalem was called a city of peace. But Jerusalem was also called the city of truth. Another name. Friends, the only city of truth I know today that has the truth in its purity as gotten from the apostles is the Adventist church. And then why it says it is as certain that we have the truth as God lives. In other words, if we don't have the truth, turn the car over, there is no God. That's a bold statement. This is the anti-type Jerusalem. We have the truth. So what God is saying, friend, the sealing takes place inside of God's remnant church. Ain't no sealing going on outside there. All these offshoot movements. There's no sealing, friends. There is no sealing going on in Babylon. God is calling them out of where is he calling them to? Inside God's remnant church. Is everything kosher in there? No. Is everything perfect? No. But Jesus Christ never told us to look for a perfect church. Amen. He said look for a perfect Jesus. Amen. Look for a perfect message. Amen. And if you found a perfect church, you would spoil it yourself. Because you got some issues. You got a whole lot of issues that you're dealing with. It's not perfect, but we work with it the best as we can. Amen. Friends, let me tell you something. I could give you the stories out. I have been banned, blocked. It's amazing. I'm an evangelist and I travel a lot. I travel extensively. And the ASI group wanted to bring me to a certain country to do a campaign. And the president said, no, not Carlton, not. He vehemently blocked it. And the ASI asked, well, What's the problem? He works for the organization. He's the pastor. What's the issue? Is it morally, theologically, doctrinally, ethically? The man couldn't even answer. Mm, sure. He just blocked it. Wow. You know what happened what God did in that country? The baptism rates began to shrink. Wow. It shrunk, it shrunk, it shrunk, it shrunk. And ASI again said, would you consider not? And they, they put some strong petition to him now. And he had to concede. That man worked as my Bible worker. <laughs> the president of the conference. He was my quiz man. He sat in the second seat. The first meeting was at his church for four weeks. And did you know, after the second sermon, as God is my way, he says, not, do you want a job down here? I said, no, thank you. I'm an evangelist. And after I left his church, ASI brought me back to the second largest church, the secretary's church of the conference. I did a campaign there. I spent almost three months in that country. I came back to the States just to change my clothes and went back again. The point is, God have a funny way of fixing these brothers and sisters. You let God fight your battles. A lot of us are being persecuted because of righteousness. You hold on to Jesus and he will fix it. And when God fix it, them folks stay fixed. Today he's my biggest fan. And the other day he was going to um to do a campaign somewhere. He said, "Not, nah, could you could you send me those powerpoints, man?" And the, and the flesh said, "No." And the spirit said, "No, no, 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 no. God do good." This was the same man who literally, literally, I was on the line. He said, "No, over my dead body." And he had to. Swallow those words. We have our challenges in the church, my friends. Do not lose hope. 
and faith in God's system. God has faithful people in all ranks. Amen. They're not in the majority, but God never needs the majority in them. Amen. Let's be faithful right now. Amen. So the sealing takes place in God's remnant church. Again, I want to appeal to you, friends. And now let me say this. Don't even lend your time to those ministries. That all they do is just expose the fault of the church. Ted Wilson ain't doing this. He ain't doing that. What are you doing? And even if you have an issue against Ted Wilson, Matthew 18 says, don't put it on Facebook. You go to him. Amen. You fly to Michigan. If it's that important, pay your ticket and go there. They're going to hear you. Bring an elder. Amen. And then if he doesn't want to hear you, you leave him alone. They don't do that. They go on YouTube and they find these articles and they put it up there. Put it up there. It's almost like they're tabloids. And dirt never converts. If you had a wife, and on every Sabbath you say, boy, she can't cook. She burned the rice. She burned the rice. And you're going to talk about, we have a potluck. Come next Sabbath. Your wife can't cook. She burned the rice. And we don't want to expose the church's faults to an unbelieving world. Amen. That they say, man, I better not stay in Babylon. No, you got to come out of Babylon. Because the plagues are about to fall, friends. And Facebook and YouTube has its blessings, but it does have its downsides sometimes. Let's not fall into that trap. Again, friends, I'm not saying we should just sit quiet and be mute, but there's a right way to do things. And oftentimes we do the we do the right thing in the wrong way. Amen. And we can't get the blessings, right? Now, as we wind down now, so we know when the ceiling began, 1848. We know what is the ceiling? God is Sabbath. The seal is the Sabbath. The seal is the truth now. Now, what is Satan's objective during the sealing time? Now, friends, we are told Satan is now using every device in the sealing time to keep the minds of God's people right from present truth and to cause them to wait. Now, friends, when I was in the world, I have some tattoos. I was a very good soccer player, and I have tats. Got marbles everywhere, ball and nets and all kind of stuff. And I remember one time I was getting a specific tattoo, and I kept on jerking. And the guy said, "Listen, man, you can't move because it's a colored ink. I'm coloring the ball, flame, fire. So when you're getting a tattoo, you have to sit. If you move, and so what happened? Now God wants to seal us." Settle us, but we're here, we're all over the place. So, so we're here today, we're here tomorrow. So, guess what? It cannot, that's why, whenever they, they do construction, when they make a sidewalk, they oftentimes they don't walk on it because it's not dry. We are all over the place, and the devil's plan is to have you there, here, and everywhere mentally. So, you can't be sealed. There's a true story in World War II a group of soldiers were trapped. In North Vietnam. They wanted to get, they, 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 they should have been picked up here, but they were out. A bullet, they were just out, out. So what the lieutenant did now, he took all the ammunition and he went up a little bit more east, west, and he, he, he created an explosion. And when the explosion went off, the enemies took off and they were picked up right here. This was called the diversionary Friends, it worked. In the sealing time, what the devil is doing is that he's using the diversionary tactic. We're told, like a skillful general, the devil lays his plans. And why says, I saw Satan and his angels talking together. He bet his angels lay snares for the people of God. You know what he did? In 1848, when the sealing was going forth, the devil created an explosion in the far end of the field. It was the gold rush. By accident? That was by design in California. And the people who should have been sealed, they took off to try to find gold. And today, the devil is using the same gold rush diversionary tactic. He's like a quarterback calling the play. He is in the huddle, huddle, huddle. He says to one angel, listen, amongst God's people, 
I want you to create an explosion in the fashion world. And some of us friends, we are obsessed with purses, scarves, hair, you not hear the name, shoes, ties, socks. We just shop, 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 rust, rust tag, and, 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 and we are not concerned about the robe of righteousness. It's all about fashion for some of us. And the devil knows some of us, we is playing like Jane. So the fashion world, hey, we ain't caught about that. So he's, he has one group of us now, all about the fashion in church. Looking good on the outside, but inside, full of dead men bones. <laughs> then he has one class, now he says, now, work on the music industry. Let's get the young folks rapping, rocking, have them singing, 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 beating the drums. That's all they do, they're singing. And in some of our churches, all they do is just sing. I went to one church, they sang for an hour and a half, and they gave me 15 minutes to preach. Wow. And the guy was like, four, three. Literally, I was under pressure. <laughs> so he has his demons, one in the music industry, the other one, then he has another demon now, create an explosion of one. He says, work on the amusements. Let's get them hooked on sports, on Super Bowl, on games, just keep them playing, 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 playing while the ceiling work is going on, Amen. and they'll be lost. Amen. And then why he says, I saw that Satan has devised ways to keep man. He has invented sports in which, and games in which we, with such intensity, we you thought it was a corner flag. I was there, friends. I played Division One. That's how I went to college. I got recruited heavily. And if I in Miami, and then I got, and from there I was in Italy. I lived in Italy for almost four years in a youth program. I know what I know the sports world. Even today, I gotta catch myself with the Premier League. I gotta be honest. Yes. Amen. Yes. Right. Be honest with yourself. Yes. It's so it's in us. Yes. We can sit down and watch Sports Center for an hour, right. and your wife said, "Come pray." It's a miniature prayer. Lord bless us for it no more. That's it. <laughs> in a rush, what we can is a diversionary tactic, friends. And he got the other class now. Lord, Facebook. Ooh. Friends, I'm going to be honest. I was an addict. I got sober. Praise the Lord. <laughs> and part of my soberness, I use Facebook only on Sabbath to share my links. When the sun goes down, I delete the app. I find myself strolling. Strolling, and you add up all the time you stroll, it can be an hour, yes. and you don't pray, mm -hmm. and you don't study, mm -hmm. and if the preacher preach an hour and ten minutes, he preached too long. I ain't going back at church, girl. Amen. Ooh, but you can watch movies yes. for two Amen. hours. Amen. My little boy was watching a program on TV, and and, and he's shaking. He sit down. You know what that means. You gotta go, but you don't wanna go. <laughs> but, 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 I said, go to the bathroom, pause the thing. Hey, hold up, please pause the pause it. <laughs> boy came out, take a drip in the evening, rush I said, are you losing your mind? We have all the best of us friends. But we don't pray, we don't study, it's by design. So the devil has one class in the fashion, one in music, the other one he says now, let's get some of them in debt. <laughs> friends, the devil's plan is to get you, to keep you in debt. When I, when I was in school, they taught me, I have this academy in Jamaica, a little poem. A man in debt is caught in a net. We just shop and shop and we are told that we should avoid debt like the smallpox. Wow. Avoid debt like Corona. <laughs> and what happens when you're in debt? two or three jobs, you overwork, yes. on the Sabbath, you need a little rest. Yes. And you're in debt, we're in debt, we're in debt, we use credit cards and credit. Friends, you can never be sealed while you're working two, three, four jobs. You have no time to study. My appeal to you, get out of debt, live on less. And be content, Paul says, for food and raiment, give thanks. Anything else is a blessing, man. Amen. Amen. 
Amen. And see it in time. Amen. You'd be surprised. Debt hurt, we're drowning in debt. Serious. I'm going to be in debt to Jesus. Come back to my student loan. I'm praying that somebody help me out. Man. <laughs> drowning in debt. Literally. So the devil knows he got some of us in music, some in fashion, some in debt. The devil says, now, another class, another demon. You cause division in the church. Wow. Friends, in the seating time, we are so divided as a people. I mean, you, 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 we, are, we are cracked. You've got the offshoot, the liberal, the mainstream, the conservative. Yeah. You got one group, LGBT, LMNOPQRZ. <laughs> you got one group, they throw already spirit of prophecy. One group, they ordain a woman. Other group, point fingers. Yes. You got one group, youth church. Uh, they just run around the church, our church. They just, hey, this is, this is what it is, friends. We are divided, and it's the devil's plan to divide us. In the ceiling time, we should be settled together. Amen. Yes. Malachi 4 says, when the Elijah message comes, wow. it brings harmony. Amen. The Elijah message does not divide the congregation. Amen. It turned the hearts of the fathers and the children. The children appreciate the old time religion, and the parents Appreciate youth, his energy and zeal, and they got, they work together, friends. Mm -hmm. The harmony. The devil now says, another group, you call the vision of a demon, you get them in debt, you get them hooked on fashion, music industry, and you now, because about what you, you work on the spirit of prophecy. Wow. You cause them to hate Eleanor Wise rap with yes. a particular hatred. Oh, yes. I was a teacher, and I was teaching outside the country, the academy, I'm teaching Bible, and a little boy said, I hate Ellen White. I was like, you can't even spell Ellen White. I said to her, him, name one book she wrote. He said, book. So how did you hate her? Because he probably heard his mother say it. Or the father say it. It is the height of ignorance to hate something you've never actually looked into. And the spirit of prophecy doesn't make us worse. It makes us better. It makes us reasonable. And so what the devil does now, friends, there is an attack against her writings. We're told, no vision, you won't perish. And the other wife says, if you lose faith in the testimonies, you will drift from Bible truth. Amen. Most people today who are outside the church, you check the, check, check, check the medication. They began by attacking her writings. And now they're in way left for you. One thing is certain, those seven Adventists who take their stand on the Satan's banner will first give up the faith in the testimonies. The last, his last exception is to have us to lose confidence in the gift. Amen. So here it is, friends. In the ceiling time, he has his multi-facet thing. He has the burners all over the place. And if we're not careful, we can fall victim I in my mind's eye, I hear the demon says to Satan, what you gonna do? Where did all he said, don't worry, I'm gonna work on the message. I'm gonna make sure in the ceiling time ain't not come from the pulpit. Candies will be a joke. Yes. Wow. Nothing of substance. And look around, friends. Thank God for you too. Some of us will be starving and, and churches like this and others that you can hear something. That will challenge us spiritually and cause you to think. We're told Satan has laid every measure possible that nothing shall come in among us to reprove, to rebuke, and exhort us to put away our errors. Amen. Nothing. There's more evangelicals now preaching that it's unbelievable. It is his plan. Where we are today, friends, there was a time the devil had happened. This was us when we started strong grape juice. This was the pure message. Strong Adventism. Over the years now, what the devil has done, every year he drops more water in the, in the thing. And it waters down and dilutes it and dilutes it and more water and more water. And now, friends, we are in, where we are now. Today, all you get is aquafina. Wow. This is what it is, friends. <laughs> pure water. Not even a little Kool-Aid in it, boy. A little color. Unfortunately, that's where we are 
in the seeding time. Amen. So what's his objective? Philip, his objective is to, is to divert the mind. She says, I saw Satan carries out his plans well. It is his plans to divert your mind. In, that's the answer, fill it in, to divert the mind of God's people in the sealing time. What then, brothers, we are told, friends, what then? The sealing work will soon be over. It began over a hundred and seven something years ago. It's almost finished. And Helen White saw when it was done, she said, I saw angels hurrying to and from heaven. An angel from heaven was incorn by his side, returning to the earth to Jesus. The saints were numbered and sealed. Once these events take place, Jesus then throws down the censor. And you think you have trouble? <laughs> you don't know what trouble is. You think you can't get on your internet this trouble? You don't know what trouble is. The next event when Michael stands up is the seven last plagues. I would wish them on my worst enemy. And it falls on those who don't have the seal of God on their foreheads who have been settled in this church. You know, there was a time in Adventism if a man left the church, he would go in the world. Be honest. He's in the club doing worldliness. We have come to a point where Adventists are leaving the church and becoming Baptists. I'm like, I'm Catholic. I'm like, what? <laughs> how do you get that? How do you get that? that I'm trying to say, how do, you, how do you, what's the formula? What's the, when I left the church, yeah. I was in the world since. Right. It was the club, but I, in, the, in my back of my mind, I knew for a certainty. You couldn't convince me that Sunday was a Sabbath. Yeah. You couldn't convince me. Even though I was living right, I knew. And I had it in my mind that when I go back to church, I'm going back to having this church. Right. Come on, you couldn't be. I remember one time, man, my auntie, she kept on pressing me, come to my church. And finally I said, you know, I'm going to go just to. Exactly. <laughs> I got to that church, man. It was a Pentecostal church. Uh -oh. And when I got to the church, they had a corner called a towering corner. And the lady said to me, ooh, you is new. You gotta come over here and sit. So I said, why am I sitting in this corner and everybody's sitting in that corner? That was a towering corner. Right. So I'm here sitting now waiting, I know what I'm tiring for. And all of a sudden, brothers and sisters, they, 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 the congregation got up and they got the, the, the praiser now and the drum and, 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 and the, the pastor all dressed in white. And he's shouting, and he took a handkerchief, and he said, Lord, touch him, Holy Ghost, touch him, touch him. And I'm saying, what, touch him, what, 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 what? And the man actually wanted me to, for me to fall in the spirit. And after church, my auntie said to me, nephew, why you resist the spirit to me? Ooh. She said, next Sunday, I said, ah, uh -huh. there will be no next Sunday. <laughs> went back again Amen. until I was rebaptized in the Adventist church. Amen. Amen. We're told, friends, as I close, she says the seal of God will never be placed upon an impure man or woman. It will never be placed upon the forehead of the ambitious world of man or woman. It will never be placed upon the forehead of those who are false tongue and deceitful hearts. She says, all. And what part of all don't you understand? The A or the LL? <laughs> all who receive the seal of God must be without spot before God. Candidates for heaven. She says in a little while, Everyone who is a child of God will have the seal placed on him. Oh, that it may be placed upon your foreheads. Amen. Upon my foreheads. We are in the seal of time. And if you think that everybody in this church is playing around, think again. 
If you think that every young people in this church is paid around, think again. There are people who are deeply committed to Jesus. They are serious about their walk. And while we're playing games and deciding we side of the fence, they are moving onward and upward and forward, and you're going to let nothing turn them around. Amen. I pray that we will cultivate that habit. That come hell or high water, I'm going to have the seal of God on my forehead. I'm going to be true to Jesus. I'm going to speak up and speak out when the Lord gives me a platform. And all things that I do must be done decently, respectfully, with tact and diplomacy. The right thing will be done in the right manner. So Jesus can get the Lord. Amen? Are you blessed this morning? Amen. Was it clear? Yes. Now friends, 1848, I want you to put that in your frontal lobe because we're going to build on that date. Any questions? All right, go ahead, my sister. What was number six? The answer to number six? I have no idea, but it's <laughs> You know, I left my master copy. Number six. Inside God's remnant church. Or inside God's system of truth. Yeah, the ceiling is taking place in the church. Don't leave. You remain faithful. And I said, friend, I'll tell you, there are some churches where it's just bad. Find another small little church you can work with. But never leave and go off in these little groups that are just out there doing their own thing, pointing fingers. That is a zero time. You will never get the ceiling God out there. In Jerusalem. My elder. Yeah. In 1848, they caught up with the message. But in Revelation 3, Jesus says, I am he that opened it, and no man shut it, and shut it, and no man opened it. Uh -huh. And she also says, from the time Jesus opened the door to the most holy place, uh -huh. the light from his law has been shining out. Exactly. So from that time, it's been the ceiling time, even exactly. though man did catch up. Exactly, exactly. You're right on, Right on. So 1840 is a very critical date in our history. Four years after the disappointment, they re reshuffled Paris Strucker, Robert Trust said, they got back together, they began to examine the books, and they were now being, being settled intellectually and spiritually. So they were not moved. That's a crucial data, right? Thank you. Any other questions? Go ahead. Uh, just a type and anti-type, what's the difference? Okay, type is the original. Anti-type is in the place of. In other words, we can draw parallels. You have the original, and you have a, a copy of it. So there are some similarities with them. They're not the same thing, but there are some similarities. So like Israel and spiritual Israel? Exactly. Okay. Like Elijah and the Elijah message. Okay. Thank you. They're parallels, but they're not identical. There are some similarities. And that's what the Bible is written. There are some parallels, right? Case in point, Adam, the first was a type of the second Adam Christ. Right? Sin began in a the garden. That's a type. Anti-type. Redemption began in the garden. Garden of Gethsemane. Type. Sin came on a tree. The fruit. Anti-type. Redemption came on a tree. So you see there are some parallels you can you can draw. There's a lot more I can give you. You know, you can talk one and one and give you some more. But there are similarities. It makes the Bible alive when we study that the type and that type of methodology, right? Amen. Alright, go ahead, my sister. Are you currently a pastor of the Seventh-day Adventist Church? Yes. Oh, okay. I um when I left Oakwood, I um nobody wanted to hire me. They felt we were too too radical. <laughs> when me and Jeremiah Davis were in, we were in the same pool. Doing 11 and so forth. And what happened now, um, you know, I was doing, I wanted to be an evangelist. That was my calling. So I worked with Mark Finley and just kind of learned and broke and just learned the trade. Finally, I got, I worked as a teacher and then I got hired at Florida Conference. Um, I worked with them and then I worked with Southeastern Conference in Florida. Uh, but it, it was, was so restrictive. If I was going to travel to Europe, I had to get authorization and I, I resigned, yes, sir. but they wanted a church plan to be done in a very wealthy area, ritzy area, Caucasian area. They said, now would you, would you help us out? No problem. So we took a group of people, 
and we went to a place called Wellington. Your sound was wealthy. Yeah. It is wealthy. No one is presence in that city. Over 80,000 people. So we took, it's called the Wellington Project. We, I took that group and we're there, we're in a school, we we're doing some phenomenal things. Then COVID came and just, you know, but we're still working. So I work with them, my sister, but not so much for them. My wife works for the Congress, she's an educator. And my kids attend Adventist school. So I work with the system, but I'm not really, I don't work with them. I don't work for them, pardon me, but I work with them as an evangelist. All right? All right? That's what I'm going to close up. Well, you mentioned about that every Christian needs to worry about getting out of death, right? Yes. Definitely. We should. Um, you know, assess your income. You know, try to pay off those bills, man. You know, and ask God, the good Lord, to help you. Because when you're in debt, it's pressure. Mm -hmm. You gotta work overtime. Yes. And, that, and what happens now, missionary work suffers, your devotion suffer, yes. your spiritual life suffer, family worship suffer, yes. and on Sabbath you're so exhausted. You can't stay away in church. And that's not what God designed for us to be. Right? And God will help us if we desire to get out of debt. Yes. And stay out of debt, yes. right? And live within your means, amen? Um, can I just get the name of that book of Neil Nelly? Oh, uh, you yes, uh, Dr. Neil Nelly. The book is called Proof Positive. Proof Positive. Okay, my computer, Proof Positive. And uh, it's a very good book. Get the hardback. You know, I'm always a, a fan of hardback books. They're more durable. Um, here it is, Proof Positive. By, you can get it on, on Amazon. Use, you can get a used copy also. Um, about 50 bucks. You know, given. But it's a very good book, very, very good book. And he's an Adventist. Yes. Very, very, he's a good guy. All right? We're going to close off and pray, and then we're going to have a break, and then we will get ready for our next.